correct leg, tip number one. All right, read the task, read which leg it is, and if you need to reposition your patient, reposition your patient, all right? From a personal point of view, because, and this is sort of for reality, if you're doing physio, I find it easier to have my patient towards me and run down the leg away from me, all right? Just because that feels more comfortable for me to do. And when you're doing range of motion, you're sort of bringing it towards their body and towards you. And in reality, if you've got a particularly grumbly, groany patient or they're a bit rolly, they're feeling a bit unstable, they feel like they're being hugged whilst having a massage. So they quite like it from a practical point of view. So, effluage, patrissage and passive range of motion. Effluage, this dog has got the worst case of pins and needles that you've ever experienced. If someone came along to you when you had raging pins and needles and then touched your foot, you'd probably punch them in the face. Okay? So... Imagine this dog is having that. So this is the right leg, the correct leg, okay? And the purpose of effluage is to desensitize the entire surface of the leg. And the most comfortable way of doing that is to continually have one hand on the leg at all times. And what we mean by that is, I'll do it this way and then spin. One hand comes down, gets to the bottom, the other one starts coming down. You've all had a massage where they do your back and they kind of, you feel like they haven't ever stopped touching you. One hand comes down, the other one comes down. You've all had effluage if you've ever had a back massage or a leg massage or any massage. That's effluage, it's that constant movement. They're not doing any pressure, they're not doing anything. It's just to desensitize. So one hand comes down, other one then follows. Hands come down, other one then follows. Am I making sense? And you're coming around all sides and down to the bottom. All right? Effluage is quite straightforward. Timings wise, you've got six minutes. Theoretically, physio would take you longer anyway. So give yourself plenty of time just doing it. Yes, it feels a bit awkward and it's very quiet and you're just sort of massaging the stuff to it. But do take your time with it, okay? And the best practice, if you've got an animal at home, cats, some cats like it, others don't. But the best way to think of effluage is when you're like, you know, when you're giving cats really good smoothies and you're like, yes. And you're both like, yeah, like that. that's effluage. One hand after the other, after the other, after the other. And where cats are like, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Some cats might be willing, others might not be. But either way, effluage is that constant, one hand is constantly touching, covering all the surface of the leg and down to the foot. Now, again, do we go up the leg or down the leg? Again, provided the technique is fine. Personally, I like going with the hair with effluage because it's more comfortable. Okay? But again, it doesn't really matter provided that you're doing a technique that's suitable. So stroking is essentially effluage. Petrissage, we're adding in some more movement. Again, if you've ever had a massage, they go from sort of rubbing with the palm of the hands to introducing the thumb. So you feel them sort of adding pressure. Now I like to kind of think of it like a one thumb after the other and go down. Again, you'll have experienced someone going like that and not in your shoulder blades and you're like, ah, oh, no, no, no. It's that sensation where someone's using their thumb then they get a really bad knot and they like properly rub it with their finger and that really hurts. We don't need to do that in this patient, they've just got a bit of a numbing leg, okay? So we're just rubbing, again, whether you go from bottom to top, top to bottom, doesn't matter, but we're just doing this motion all the way down. Okay, just that. Nothing more sinister than that. Rubby, rubby, dubby, dubby, down. Rubby, dubby, 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 down. And the aim of it in reality is to pull the muscle and loosen the skin off from the surface of the muscle. And you'll start to feel with time in dogs that have got really tense shoulders in particular. If you've got a dog at home, do this to their shoulders. My dog loves it. If you just do that to his shoulder, he's like, oh, no. And it just loosens the tissue across the shoulders, especially for a dog that pulls. Because they get really tense shoulders. But that motion, all right? Effluage going down the leg. And you can come back up. You want to come back up? That's fine. Right. Going down the leg. Then range of motion. Now, <laughs> The common term is bicycling, okay? How many dogs have you seen riding bikes? <laughs> okay? So, demonstrate on me. Any movement that you do in prom needs to be the movement to which a dog's leg would naturally go, okay? So, we had, what did we have yesterday, Jackie? It was sort of that, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay? That's not quite right. <laughs> Broken leg. Okay? So, personally, I like going toes to hip. You can go hips to toes, doesn't really matter. But we're literally just moving like that. A reality, again, in a dog, in real life, if you're doing this to any patient, it's impatient, they love it. But it is a very microscopic movement, all right? Likewise with this dog's 
and invite, I know this dog's got a straight leg, it hasn't got a hock, okay? But have a go. We want to be literally moving it through. That is it. It's not much more complicated than that, okay? Up to the stifle. Okay? Stifle. Hip doesn't quite work in this dog. Doesn't quite. But in your actual dog's apologies, this is going to look really rough on this dog. But in your actual dog, you're supporting the whole leg and just bringing it almost kind of like that. Okay? And then you add them all together. So we go up, we go down. Now, cycling. Yes, it is cycling, but dogs don't do that motion. How many dogs do you see run like that? Woohoo! <laughs> they don't. It's not normal. Dogs and cats, that's their motion, isn't it? That's how they walk. So if you're doing this in reality, that's the movement your animal is going to want to take. They're going to 